Hello everybody, it is Connor and welcome back to another Rumour Mill episode. Welcome back to another uh, One Leads video. Sorry, I'm a bit fluxed out here after the last video <laughs> on mute. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, but we're back here with some transfer news. We're back here with some youngster updates. We're back here with some Onahi transfer news. We're back here with some Danilo at Palmeiras update. So yeah, Danilo at Palmeiras, we'll start with that. Make sure you're liking the video as always, by the way, guys. Please comment and share and do all that good stuff. But we'll start with Palmeiras. Start Danilo, the central midfielder. Nottingham Forest are in for him. 20 million quid. West Ham, Everton, Leeds are apparently in the picture as well. Absolutely thriving at Palmeiras this season. Leeds in desperate need for a central midfielder. We're looking at Onahi. Is that going to get done? We'll get onto that in just a little bit. But Danilo is flying for Palmeiras. Palmeiras are top of their domestic league of course and this guy's turning a lot of heads so keep an eye on that one apparently Nottingham Forest according to several reports are trying to get this one done and why is this important everybody well it's important because other teams in and around Leeds United aka Southampton aka Nottingham Forest are looking to strengthen it looks like Danilo is the perfect profile for the Premier League very aggressive according to reports I've read very physical and very technical as well so looks like he'll slot perfectly into the Forest midfield unless Leeds United are able to pry him from their grasp. And I think, you know, there's definitely room for Leeds to do that. Of course, Leeds United been in the Premier League longer. Will we finish higher than Forest? You would hope so. Fingers crossed. And could we offer a better wage packet? Who knows? We know Forest are absolutely bankrolled at the minute, but it's definitely worth keeping an eye out on Danilo at Palmeiras because apparently it could go either way. Now, we mentioned Danilo. Why we mentioned Danilo? Well, Onahi... Obviously, the Moroccan midfielder, we spoke about him yesterday, flying, absolutely flying um, uh, at the World Cup for Morocco. I thought he was absolutely superb. Him and Amrabat in the midfield, the anchors, the the, the dictators of, of play throughout that middle, the dictators of the tempo. I just thought they were absolutely exquisite standouts for me. And obviously, we heard that Radrazani was a massive fan throughout the tournament. I think Victor Orta did an interview, um, or Radrazani did an interview and spoke about Onahi. So this is a credible link. This really is a credible link where you can see it going somewhere. Apparently, Leeds have offered the most money, $22.5 million. We're going to get on to where the money has come from in just a little bit in due course. However, that is one, and I think... That is a fantastic little pyramid for Leeds. If they have Onahi as a number one, maybe Danilo as a number two, just having realistic quality targets that if one falls down, the next one can come in. That is what Leeds United need to do. We can't, for me, spend all 30 days like we did with Charles de Ketelaer on Onahi because another update, everybody, is that apparently he's favouring a move to Naples. He wants to go to Italy. He wants to challenge at, uh, you know, at the top of Serie A. He wants to be in, champion, in, in the Champions League. Um obviously calendar, which I can completely understand. And that's why it's going to be difficult for Leeds. There's no doubt that Victor Orta has got a decent scouting network. We've seen that from Josip Gvardiol all the way to Matthias Kuna, all the way to Rodrigo de Paul, Charles de Ketelaer. There's so many. The problem is, I've said this before, when you are almost Aldi and Lidl at the minute and you're trying to shop in Waitrose, it's not going to work. It's not going to be good enough for you because there are always going to be other top, top clubs looking at these players and how on earth do you battle with them? You can't just offer the pressure Premier League as a as a way forward there's got to be something else the player has got to see that Leeds are progressing and that's why it's vitally important that Leeds are able to get up that league because you get up that league you're able to progress you're able to get better staff better players in etc etc so what's going to happen with Onahi nobody knows apparently Leicester City have inquired and are looking to offer something that is significantly lower than what Leeds are offering Napoli are not offering as much as Leeds are offering either but we had this problem with Charles de Ketelaer AC Milan offered less. Leeds went in with a hell of a lot more, but we didn't manage to get that one done. So keep an eye out on that one. Leo Yelda, Joseph Gelhart, looks like they're going to be going out on loan. Yelda, I'm not really sure on. I, I really like Leo Yelda. I've mentioned this several times to you guys. But really, when you're looking at it, he's not going to get many many minutes, unfortunately. He's not going to get a lot of game time. So I completely understand. Championship club, a championship club who plays good football, a championship club where he's going to get experience maybe in one or two different positions, centre-back, left-back, increase that versatility in his game because it's going to be versatile for Leeds whenever he gets in that first team. The same with Joe Gelhart. Joe Gelhart's the big one. We need to get him in the championship. We need to get him scoring goals. He needs more minutes. And ironically, when it comes to Ruta, who looks like he's about to sign for Leeds, Ruta is, has actually got less 
lesser goals to minutes than uh, Joe Gelhart, which is nuts. But yeah, uh, focusing on uh, Ruta then, it looks like he's going to be signing either today or tomorrow. We'll have a video updating you on that um, on that one, guys. But um, yeah, great signing for Leeds. And apparently, according to reports, Victor Orta has managed to get him for significantly less than what is being reported. Obviously, we're hearing 30, 35 million pounds not not um not euros but pounds which is a massive massive valuation apparently it's significantly lower than that so that's great i mean we saw earlier on in the window it looks like brentford have picked up a striker for around about 24 25 million quid i believe but a lot of that is in installments if leeds can play 20 million quid up front then put 10 million installments on it i think that's a that's that's hopefully a good little investment in a long term project which is ruta junior furpo it looks like uh, there is going to be a real complication here, which could work in Leeds United's favour. Alex Moreno, the Real Betis left back, looks like he's going to be moving to Unai Emery's Aston Villa, who Leeds United face on Friday the 13th of January. Who's going to replace Alex Moreno at Real Betis? It looks like one of their number one targets is going to be Junior Firpo. A win-win scenario for Leeds United. A player who is surplus to requirements for me. A player who's never going to be able to hold down that left back position. A player who is consistently injured all, you know, we, we see that, we've, we've seen that in his record at Leeds. We saw that in his record prior at Barcelona as well. Leeds managed to get it over line for 13 million. Is that that much money? No, it's not. So, you know, you cut your losses a little bit. If Leeds are able to get back 10 million quid for him, or maybe even more, he's only 26 years of age, still got, still got a lot of room to develop in, then that would be fantastic business for Leeds United. It's not worked out for Junior at Leeds. However, then it would be interesting to see how Leeds would go about investing in another left-back because we would need another left-back, not just Verba, not just Yelder, not just Strauch. What is the, what is the you know, the relation with all those? They're all centre-backs by trade, so we need a left-back. However, it's really enthusiastic for me. I'm really enthusiastic about it to say that I don't think it's ever worked at Leeds for him. So but moving him on, I think would be a good, a good, a good move for, for Leeds United. So yeah. And then just a little one to fall back on everyone. Where has this money come from? Well, I find this very exciting. I do, because for me, this is indicative of one thing happening in the summer. Um, a certain, a certain um American franchise, if that's what you want to call them, taking over in the summer, because there is absolutely no way. Um, that Andrea Radrazani has suddenly managed to find with the Onahi money that allegedly we've from very, very good sources we've bid, the top 22.5 million, and obviously the money that we're putting into uh, to uh, Jorginho Ruta, 30 million quid probably altogether, including installments, has just been pulled out of Radrazani's pocket. So watch this space, but I think we're, we're in for something this summer. That's my little intuition. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you.